politics are all driven by a number of pressures that uh, will shape all outlooks, all scenarios. So there are three driving pressures. One is the, the surge in energy demand, largely uh, because the emerging nations are beginning to reach the most energy intensive phase of economic development. Uh, the fact that supply will grow, but it will struggle to grow at the same kind of pace. And thirdly, you have uh, environmental pressures. Clearly, uh, high profile at the moment are the climate pressures, but there are pressures in other environmental areas as well. And so these stresses will shape the energy outlook. Uh, and we have uh, two outlooks which explore the boundaries of either how sluggish or uh, how accelerated the pace of uh, technology deployment and regulatory underpinning of the energy system might develop. They're called scramble and blueprints. Scramble essentially uh, looks at a national government scramble for resources and the implications of that. And blueprints, uh, which recognizes that other actors, as well as national governments, influence the system, uh, that you get new collaborations and coalitions as new opportunities are recognized in this future. And what sort of role will Africa play in these energy scenarios? As an emerging region, um, uh, you have an influence on uh, the international stage, uh, which also creates conditions into which you will emerge. Uh, so for example, uh, a blueprints type of outlook, which has more collaborative public-private activity, uh, and has uh, such features as carbon pricing, uh, the development of biofuels, are all a more benign environment in which to emerge. Uh, and you can be part of shaping that international environment. And could we be more specific in terms of which African countries will be playing a vital role in terms of energy supply into the future? We have, um, uh, in our outlooks, uh, we model um, uh, individual countries and regions as well. So we have a sense of that modeling. But what is more important is to recognize uh, what is the driving difference between these two outlooks. And that's the way that choices are made either individually or collectively through uh, governments uh, or authorities at a community level. In your opinion, do you think governments are taking the energy crisis seriously enough, particularly when you realize that you need political will in order to mitigate dire energy circumstances into the future? People are very aware of these issues. Uh, there are difficulties that they have which are self-created because uh, you tend to find that uh, supply, demand, and environmental issues are actually treated in three different wings of government. And you cannot look at this going forward unless you see it as a single system which influences each other. And so one thing uh, that is uh, a struggle for some governments is being able to have a coordinated, coherent, integrated view on what is really a set of issues to be managed together. So that's, that, that's one area. So there's an awareness but not necessarily always the capability of, of moving forward. So here we are in 2010 and your work involves energy scenario planning going forward. Now given the history of the work that you've done, are we where you thought we would be in 2010 and are your predictions likely to be accurate in 2050? We've had uh, the continuation of an economic surge, then a deep slump and now a fragile recovery. So of course we look back and say, what has changed, what hasn't changed, uh, what's emerged going forward that is different to the way we thought just uh, two or three years ago. The emergence uh, of uh, new sources of, of natural gas, uh, first in North America, uh, so-called unconventional gas, but the prospect of that elsewhere, which has actually uh, taken some supply areas uh, and made them more attractive, more available to grow volumetrically uh, more quickly than we felt before. And so I think uh, natural gas as a low carbon energy source is uh, an attractive uh, prospect, uh, even more so than we felt just three years ago.